In this topic, we're going to discuss the polymerase chain reaction. So by the end of this topic, you should be able to discuss the steps in the polymerase chain reaction. Just to recap, in the last lesson, we looked at the different steps to make human insulin. So we discussed the identification and isolation of DNA fragments. Today, we're going to have a look at cloning, which involves the polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. Now, once you've got your DNA, you need to put it into a vector. So that's insertion. You're going to insert your DNA into or gene into a vector. And then transformation is taking this vector and putting it into suitable host cells. Once you've done that, you need to identify which of the host cells has successfully taken up your gene. So you use gene markers for this. And then you're going to grow up the population of host cells. So what is polymerase chain reaction? Well, this is an automated process, making it both rapid and efficient. And it requires the following. You need a DNA fragment that's going to be copied. You need DNA polymerase. And this is an enzyme that joins tens of thousands of nucleotides in a matter of minutes. And it's obtained from bacteria and hot springs. So it's therefore tolerant to heat. And it does not denature at high temperatures. Then you need your primers and nucleotides. Now your primers are short sequences of nucleotides that have a set of bases complementary to those at one end of each of the two DNA fragments. Then of course you know your nucleotides. These contain each of the four bases found in DNA. And finally you need your thermocycler. So this is a computer controlled machine that varies temperatures precisely over a period of time as you can see in that image. Right, let's discuss the three stages of PCR. You've got the separation of DNA strands, the addition of primers, and then the synthesis of DNA. Now notice how each of these three stages has got a different temperature. Okay, let's have a look at step one. This is the separation of the DNA strand. So the DNA fragments, primers, and DNA polymerase are placed in a vessel in the thermocycler. The temperature is going to be increased to 95 degrees Celsius, and this causes the two strands of DNA fragments to separate. Then you cool the mixture down to 55 degrees Celsius, and this causes the primers to join, which we call annealing. So they join to the complementary bases at the end of the DNA fragment. So these primers provide the starting sequence for DNA polymerase to begin DNA copying because DNA polymerase can only attach nucleotides to the end of an existing chain. Primers also prevent the two separate strands from simply rejoining. And then the third step is the synthesis of DNA. So the temperature is going to be increased to 72 degrees Celsius. So this is the optimum temperature for the DNA polymerase to add complementary nucleotides along each of the separated DNA strands. So it begins at the primer on both strands and adds the nucleotides in sequence until it reaches the end of the chain. Now, because both separated strands are copied simultaneously, you've now got two copies of the original fragment. Once the two DNA strands are completed, the process is repeated by carrying out the temperature cycle again. So this gives four strands and so on until millions of copies have been made. So the whole cycle takes about two minutes. Now, after only 25 cycles, over a million copies of the DNA can be made and 100 billion copies can be manufactured in just a few hours. Right, in summary, here you can see a graph to illustrate the different steps that occur during PCR. Can you remember the different temperatures? So notice how DNA is being denatured about 95 degrees Celsius. 
so the two strands are separating. Then you've got the primers annealing. So here it's about 50 degrees Celsius, so I told you 55 degrees Celsius. And then the primers are being extended using DNA polymerase, and that occurs at about 72 degrees Celsius. And that concludes our lesson, the end.